What's up, everybody? X Wizard here. Welcome back. I'm gonna work on my game some more. When last we left off, I composed a music theme for it, but I'm not at a point where I can really use that in the game yet. Um, and then before that, we just got AI to work in a basic manner. So since we've uh, last left off, I I added another ship or two. I also added some more weapons and different like projectiles. Um, but yeah, so I've got guys that attack me and stuff like that. So I'm pretty happy. So I was trying to, to to figure out what I wanted to work on uh, next, and if we go to my object controller here. Um, let me zoom in even more. Boom, there we go. So, over here, I uh, kind of made like a little task list. So, I've got kind of three sections or four. I've got issues and bugs that need to be resolved. I've got sort of code cleanup tasks. Uh, I've got new, the next features I want to implement, and then just miscellaneous stuff. So, Let's talk about issues and bugs. So there's a particles depth issue right now. So for example, if you look at explosions, um, let me go into my room. Let's see, rooms, room one. I'm gonna get rid of a few of these enemies here. And I'm just gonna put one like right here. So we're gonna see what happens. Okay. So he's gonna so see how the explosions appear over top like they're supposed to? That's good. When I accelerate though, they appear on the bottom. And the reason why that's happening, and also watch my, my thrusters. Sometimes they'll also uh, appear on top for a split point uh, for a split frame. So what I think is happening with that is that um when I go to do my projectile code here, and I'm doing like a collision event, um, and we're doing this uh, emit explosion script, and we're we're passing in a depth argument. So if we go to this script here, scripts, scr emit explosion. So we're setting the particle system depth for the entire particle system. So since I'm using one particle system right now, it's basically the explosion supposed to appear over top, but then like, you know, as soon as I um, go to do my, my thrusters, which I think my thruster particles uh, are also setting system depth, it's just immediately changing it. So if I'm accelerating when a rocket hits me and explodes, the it sets it over top for the first step, and then the, the next step, since I'm still accelerating, it just moves it underneath. So what I need to do is, I think to fix that, I need to make two particle systems and just to have them, um, and not really worry about depth at all, but instead take advantage of room layers. So if we go back to my room here, you can see that we have these different layers here. So we have an instance layer, and then we have our near and far background. So what I can do is I can create two layers on either side of instances, and one will, uh, I'll set a particle system for the top, and um, so my explosion can use that layer, and then like for the stuff I want to appear underneath the, the, the ship, like my thruster particles, those will be on the layer beneath. So let's do... Let's see, what layer do particles need? Let's go to the help manual. Particles. Okay, particle systems. Particle systems create layer. Instance layer. It doesn't say anything about like what type of layer it needs to be. It just says like, you know, for example, instance layer, but uh, I don't see that it has any specific. And then there's some stuff where, so it has this persistent flag. Uh, I think I'm going to set that to false, and then what that means is I'll also have to do some memory management code after all, which is fine. But uh, So let's work on that. So first things first, let's make our layers. So I think it's just going to be instance layer. Like I, I'm just going to use that because that's what they, they recommended. And I'm just going to name this. 
I updated Game Maker, so uh, the room editor looks a little bit different. Uh, that was one of the features, I guess, they, they added. So for this layer, I'm going to call this Particles Top, because it's going to be on top of, of any instances. And then I'm going to make another instance layer. I'm going to put this below instances, which is the, the standard layer. And I'm going to name this Particles bottom okay bam cool so now now that we have those layers created let's go back into our um controller where we define these particle systems and what i think i'm going to do is i'm going to move these to a script because since we're defining globals i can move this to us to a single script so what i'll do is i'm just going to create a script SCR particle control and I'm going to eventually migrate all of my particle stuff here so um, because again you can declare multiple functions inside of a single um, inside of a, a, a single script all right so let's name this function I'm just going to say uh, init particles and then I'm going to create another function, function SCR uh, clean up particles. And then, uh, yeah, so let's start with that. So to init the particles, uh, let's see. I might have to also declare multiple uh, emitters and stuff too. So I'm just going to move this. I'm just going to cut it out of my controller. And we're going to move it into my function here. So let's expand this a bit so we can actually see. So I'm going to indent my pasted code now. So we're doing our global P system here. So I'm going to change this to P system. Um, I'm going to just do a control F. And I'm going to change this to the system top. Boom. Okay. And now what we need to do is I'm going to change this to P emitter top as well. Uh, because we're going to have two particle systems and two uh, emitters for both systems. So let's do part system create layer so the layer is going to need to be um what did i name it you go to my room particles top particles bottom got it so we named it particles top and we're going to make this false so it's not persistent okay we're going to get rid of this commented uh, dummy code here that was left over. So there, we've got that. So now we're gonna, I'm just going to copy and paste this and just change it to bottom. Bottom. And bottom. Cool. So then... I'm going to I'm going to move my emitter code to the top um after we declare our system emitter create so it's going to use that that system and then i'm just going to do i'm just going to copy this i actually already copied it because i moved it but whatever uh bottom and change this to bottom there we go so now we've got two particle systems and emitters for both and i don't think that we have to modify our actual particle types at all because when we go to do our burst particles i think we have to specify like the emitter or, or the system or whatever so cool so now that we have this stuff defined particle system create all this is good let's get rid of this because we're not using it and i also need to correct my spelling of missile which is missile uh, Americans just pronounce it weird, I guess, which is fine. Um, and I need to update that 
pretty much everywhere. So let's do Control F. And we're going to change this to Missile. Replace. There we go. Stonks. All right, cool. So that's done. So then we also need to make up a function to clean up the particles. So let's see what we have to do with particle systems here. So particles cleaning up. So we need to destroy the types, emitters, and systems. Okay. So let's just copy this code in here in a multi-line comment. Uh, and I will work with it as needed here. So let's go ahead and uh, I'm just going to paste it here because I think we can we can modify this as needed. So let's do... So it looks like we're destroying our types first. And I'm sure that there's a reason why we're doing that first. So I'm going to follow what their guidance is, what they showed. So we have P-type missile, missile trail, P-type explosion, P-type ship thruster. So P-type. Oh, we did P-type explosion. They have semicolons after, but that's not... They just do that for practice because a lot of languages require it. Like, I know it was a big deal in, like, JavaScript and stuff and, like, PHP and stuff like that. But most languages these days are, are pretty lax when it comes to the to the semicolon. So I'm not going to worry about it. So I've got three particle types. So missile trail... Do I still have? And then we've got ship thruster. There we go. So we are deleting, uh, destroy our, not, not just story, destroy our particle types. Destroy our emitters. Finally, destroy the particle systems themselves. So here, you know, we've got two different emitters, so this works fine. So global P system top. P system bottom. And we're going to destroy... Uh, P emitter top P emitter bottom there cool and then we just have to destroy these so P system top and then we're going to destroy P system bottom so we're putting this all in a function so that we can just call it whenever we need to. So I think in my object controller, whenever there's different uh, events that not an object has. There's lots of events in Game Maker. There's an event called Room Start and Room End. So in my Room Start event, I'm gonna check if I'm in a room that will need to use particles. If they are, then I'll just run the the script to uh, init particles to I initialize our, our particle systems. Uh, and if we, uh, on the room end event, um, we can just destroy them. So one thing I do want to, or I wonder if, hmm, can we check if they exist first before we just try to destroy them to just, to just make fail safe code like that would make me happier part system exists. So particle systems. We have something that we can check for that. What about types? Part type exists. Okay, cool. So we do have a way to do that. So destroy our particle types if they exist. And this is just going to be, you know, uh, kind of lengthy, but it's, I think it's necessary. If part 
type exists and we're going to say global we tap explode on and we're just going to move this <clears throat> here okay so this is basically all we're going to do is just do this and this will look a lot prettier here in a second when I finish this so p type missile trail and p type ship thruster so this is just making it so that I can uh, put this in my room end event and I can just run this every time regardless of if I'm like uh, because I I might not be able to control which room I go to next uh, or at least in the the room end event I might not know so rather than having to develop a system to, to control that I'm just gonna make this cleanup to where I can just run it after every time we end a room uh, it'll just delete it if uh, it'll just destroy the the systems and stuff if they exist um, if they don't doesn't do anything so cool so now we're going to do if and we're going to do part emitter exists and so we need to pretty much do this uh same damn thing you know, it's kind of weird like when you create the emitter you have to specify the particle system that emitter is for but whenever you do anything with it, you also you still have to specify the, the particle system. I think that should be... We shouldn't have to do that because we already supply that when we create the, the emitter in the first place. We tell it what system we want to use for the emitter. So, whatever. Just a complaint. Part emitter uh, exists. And we just need this. Wait, did I do this right? I did not. I will fix that there. So let's copy this. Boom. Okay. And we will just move this here. And there we go. So we're checking for our emitters. That's good to go. And finally, if part system exists, uh, and we just need to do global.p system top. Indent, boom. So and then if part system exists, there we go, global dot p system bottom. There. Uh, let's see. Boom. Cool. So now we have our cleanup code. We're good to go there. I'm going to get rid of this. And for now, we'll just put a uh, uh, mint to be called uh, in the room end event and this is meant to be called uh, from the room start event uh, where particles are needed okay so that sort of uh, communicates what we're trying to do here so we still have all of our particles we're good to go there so but we did make some breaking changes because we and we haven't uh, addressed those yet so what we need to do now so let's go to our SCR emit explosion. And I'm just going to uh, cut this. And I'm going to move this up to my uh, particle control script. All right. So emit uh, a particle explosion. Boom. Not bomb. Boom. So we can also get rid of this depth. We don't need that anymore. Uh, we're going to get rid of this. So we're going to do P system top. 
And we're gonna do P emitter top. And we're gonna burst. P system top. P emitter top. And there we go. So we just fixed that. We can we can actually delete this uh, SCR emit explosion now because it is just an empty uh, script now. So now we can move on to SCR emit thruster particles. And we'll do the same thing. We're going to copy. We're going to cut actually cut this out. We're going to paste this in here. Let's get rid of this script that we don't need anymore. Boom. Okay. And then we're going to refactor uh, this system to work. Emit thruster particles. And uh, so we're going to get rid of the depth. We don't need to set the, the depth anymore because we're using layers. So we're iterating through all the thrusters, calculate length and direction, all that stuff is good. Part type direction. Um, P type ship thruster. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, set where the particle should be emitted from. So we're gonna do P system bottom and P emitter bottom. And then we're gonna em emit the burst. P system bottom. Uh, P emitter bottom. There we go. So this should be good. Let's clean up this code a little bit. Uh, let's see. Iterate through all of our thrusters. Calculate length and direction. We're going to be potentially modifying these values. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Set the direction they should be emitted from. Okay. Uh, meant to be called from a ship that has a thrusters array okay save and then what other particle do we have uh i think didn't my projectile have like a particle stuff uh in the step event yeah so Yeah, so I had some stuff here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Um, I'm going to cut this out. And in my particle control, I'm going to make a new function. SCR. Uh, we're going to do, you know, function. SCR. Uh, emit missile trail particles there we go paste cool so we can get rid of this let's refactor this so these particles i think these should go on the bottom um oh no maybe these should go on top I think we'll see how it looks. If it looks weird, I'll move it to the bottom. But for now, I think that should be what we need to do and change this to be spelled correctly. There we go. Cool. So now we have that. We can go up here to where we're using that and just do SCR emit missile trail particles. So again, I, I'm... I'm prefixing all my functions with SCR to show that it's a custom script. Um, I don't want to there to be confusion with, uh, you know, function names of what game maker provides. So I'm just naming my own with that convention. Uh, yeah. So emit a burst of missile trail particles. There we go save so now if we go up to our controller and we go into the uh other room start event so here uh create our particle system if we are in the uh in a usable room so i'm gonna say if room equals and I'm going to say just for now, room one, 
because that's what we're uh, that's what we're doing. Now we're going to do SCR uh, init particles. Bam! Save. Add event. Uh, other room end, and we're just going to destroy particle systems if they exist. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Script handles if they don't exist. I'm just gonna say no need. To verify if they already exist or not script handles that SCR um, well what did I call it I don't remember SCR cleanup yeah cleanup particles Let's save so now if, if we run this I think our particle should should still work there we go so you can see explosions appear on top, even though I'm accelerating. Everything looks how it's supposed to. Missile particles don't look weird at all. So I'd say we're good to go there. Wrecked. Yeah, man. Sweet. Boom. There's one item done. So now, let's uh, go back to our create event here. And uh, let's get rid of this. We don't need that. Looks like uh, we're not really creating anything anymore, which is fine. So I'm going to save this. And then so now particle depth issue. We got that resolved. Let's get that off the list. So sound audio issue. Need to figure out how to stop a sound emitted by a specific object. So for example, ship thrusters so what's happening with ship thrusters right now is let me go back to my ship and i'm going to change my ship to be i think it was ship three was my fast one i think um if i change my ship to be super fast there we go, and i give it uh like a, like a second here so he's accelerating after me his boosters are going, but it's not playing the uh, sound. Because what's happening is it's playing my sound, but when I let go, it stops that sound. It doesn't stop the specific instance of the sound I created. It, uh, it stops all sounds of that. So, yeah. So I need to work, I need to, to fix that. Um, I don't think I want to tackle that right now. There's there's going to be a few other things I'm going to tackle first, I think. Uh, shield visuals. I'm still working out how to do that. Like, I'm, I've been looking up, like... Uh, let's see. I, I don't have any more. But I was looking up, like, different sci-fi shields. Uh, sci-fi shield sprite. And there's a cool... There's a few options. Like, there's this open game art option that looks kind of cool that maybe I could use. Um... There's also just a few other options like this shield effect could be kind of cool. Maybe I can like stretch it uh, to make it work with my ship and stuff like that. Um, I think having it go from blue to like red is a really cool idea. So I'm still working out how, how I want to do that. Um, I haven't got that figured out yet. And I, I'm just not sure what to do with that. So I think I'm... My thought process of, of what I think I'm going to do there is I think I'm just going to have a shield sprite. And since all of these are like perfect circles, um, I can stretch it to make it like a oval shape and rotate with the, the ship. And I think that would probably work. And uh, what, what I was thinking about having it do is that um, whenever you get hit and it the shield absorbs damage, I set the alpha to like one that way it, 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 it's visible and then every step like it's it's fading and so if you just keep getting hit it just keeps kind of popping up and, and um, it should look pretty cool if we do it that way but I just I haven't found a good shield effect yet because the way that I have it right now it's not working that well 
and you know when it's just it's just not not looking good so i need to figure that out but i don't know what to do for that just yet next thing is shield regeneration during combat uh feels off needs more design so like right now if uh, i let this guy just wail on me here so you see my little shield popping up and then he, now now i'm getting uh, integrity damage here but my shield will occasionally just pop up randomly there you go it, 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 it just popped up Come on, buddy. You can do it. <laughs> this game's easy. This guy can't even hit me. What a loser. Whee! Okay, that's, an, that, that's another problem to, to work out. So we're going to say... Um, enemy turrets still follow. Player. Mouse... Uh, still follow mouse X Y position as opposed to targeting player. So what you saw there, like if we run this again, you can see like his turret is just aiming like wherever I my mouse is pointing, and that is pretty dumb. <laughs> So, like, I can help him hit me right now. Oh, oh, you know. Later, dork. Cool. So, another problem that I noticed was, um, like, see see how, like, I'm, I'm, I'm basically facing, like, where, where my mouse is, but I'm drifting this way, and my bullets are just kind of going the other way. That doesn't look right to me. So that is on the verge of being like a bug. Um, so where did I have that? Oh yeah, new features to implement. I put that as a feature, but I put like projectile motion. So we want to apply the ship motion to the projectile to make it more realistic. I'm going to move this to bug because this, the more I look at it, the more it just doesn't look right. So let's move this. Um, I'm going to move this probably to the top of this list here, and I'll probably knock it out right now. There we go. So projectile motion. So here's what, here's what I'm thinking of how we're doing it. So if we look at like our, our ship movement here, you know, how we're doing like motion add. Uh, when I create the projectile, I think instead of just setting the speed and, and direction, I'm going to set the motion to be what the current ship is, and then I'm also going to set the motion for where we want it to go. And I think that should look more realistic. So let's try that out. Um, where do we do that at? So I'm going to say SCR update, weapon slot, fire weapons. Um, I might just rename this file, but... So here we are. We're creating our projectile, and we're just setting the speed and we're setting the direction so yeah i think let's overwrite that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to comment that out and i'm going to do a with statement projectile and what a with does is it lets me execute code as if i was that that instance so for example with projectile which i just created I can say motion add and uh, it's going to add that motion to that instance that I'm specifying in this, this with statement. So motion add and what we're going to do is we're going to, let's see, get rid of this so I can see stuff. The direction is just going to be, uh, let's see, add our ship motion. And this might not even work now that I think about it, but we're going to try. Yeah, I don't think it's good. I wonder, can I do like projectile and then specify like a, a function to run? Hmm. 
No, it doesn't work like that. So the functions are not methods that we can run like that. So how do I want to do that then? I think it should still work with projectile because we still have uh, access to the things that are, are within our, our, our scope here. So I think that this should work. Let me just double check. Uh, let me go look up the with statement. No results for with? It's literally in the damn engine. What do you mean you can't find it? Basic code structure. Do you have anything about with statements? No, you don't. Well, I found it. Cool. Okay, so I can use other to reference uh, the stuff of the calling instance. So say like, you know, all this stuff up here, this is all stuff that I'm doing uh, from the script, from the calling weapon, whether it's a, or the, the calling instance, which is like a ship. Um, so I have access to all this stuff here. And then if I want to access that within this code block, which this with statement is running as this, this uh, object projectile that I'm creating, I just have to do other. So we can make this work. So we're going to uh, set our initial... Uh, let's see, set our initial motion to match the ship. So we're going to say motion uh, add. I'm not going to do motion set because that's just going to like overwrite everything. I, I, I want kind of, to kind of blend to take into account both. So motion add, and I'm going to do the direction is going to be other dot image angle. And the speed is going to be other dot speed whatever speed we're currently traveling at and then set the uh, motion of where we are firing the projectile so now we can do motion add and we can do what we were trying to do earlier but the direction that we want to add the the motion it's going to be where we're traveling so i'm going to say other direction and then for this one, it's going to be other dot image angle. And we're going to do other dot, and we're going to specify what we had earlier here, which is getting the uh, projectile speed from our weapon, which is sort of in our weapon slot. So uh, that should work. So let's save that. Boom. Okay. And now we also need to cover this case down here. Uh, so let's handle that. I'm just gonna copy this. And uh, we don't need, I'm gonna comment this out just in case I have to revert it in case this absolutely fails. So with projectile, other direction, other speed, it's good to go there. And then for this, we wanted to actually use the weapon angle because this is a turret. So we're just going to copy and paste this here. Save. Okay, so this is... This should take effect for both ships, so let's see what happens. This could fail miserably. It's actually working great. That, that's perfect. See, I, I'm drifting, and it's actually, you know, hitting, like, where I'm, I'm facing. Cool. I'm glad that that worked. Awesome. What's up, losers? Not losers, I guess loser or singular. Yay! Okay, that missile was weird. That missile did not look like it was going right. Ow! Okay, come at me, ship. Ah.
Or I'm just running circles around this guy right now, and it's super easy because the AI is really basic. So there's a few things I can do for that to make that like more interesting. I can try to make them like predict where I'm going to be and, and aim for that instead, uh, which I might do. Um, or I can just uh, you know make their turrets actually function and do the same thing, kind of like predict where I'm, where I'm going so that they're trying to aim. Um, another thing I was thinking about doing was also adding like a, 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 a bit of a spread. Because right now like our bullets are firing like perfectly straight. And I think it could be cool to add like a little bit of a, a, a like, bullet spread. Oh my god, I, I just gotta take forever, man. Oh, yeah cool so i'm pretty happy with how that works like it looks a little weird like when you're rotating and you fire a missile like it just kind of goes out here and it just looks really weird at first but i'm not sure what to do about that so but i'm pretty happy with how that works so let me clean up this code boom and we had this okay There we go. Cool. So I, I'm liking that. That lo that looks good to me. So yeah. So let's go back to our that's particle control, projectile motion. We just solved that bug. I'm pretty happy with that. Save. So the rest of this stuff here, um, I'm not sure if I want to solve any more bugs right now. I still got. I, I still want to do some some thinking about it, um, and uh, the next big feature to implement is like factions because um, this this OBJ good guys and bad guys thing isn't going to cut it because there's going to be tons of factions in the game, and factions might make alliances. They might you know uh, become hostile, declare war, or whatever. And, um, yeah, it's just, it, it, it's not going to work in, the, in, the, in how it currently is right now. So I need to, to figure that out before I can finish fleshing out the rest of the AI. So before I work on any new features, I also kind of want to do some of this, this code cleanup stuff. So a big thing is I want to go through my scripts and make sure they are documented in JS doc comments. So if we go over here and look up, uh, you know, I wonder if game maker has, something about it. js doc here we go cool i was gonna like look up the the js doc uh like stuff here but their site is just awful like it was written in like 1998 so i don't want to look at that monstrosity this is much nicer to, to look at so um a big reason why I'm going to do this is so that it's it's a it's like commented and documented that uh, what the function does and this the style of comments also allows you to specify like what parameters uh, or arguments a function may take if the function returns anything um, and and stuff like that. I'm not sure what all this stuff is. Feather only. I don't I don't know. Whatever, I'm, I'm going to ignore that. But that lets us do some things here. So you can see we have... Um, okay, so it does it in like... A, so they so GameMaker likes the JS doc style comments, but they do it with uh, three slashes. Whereas I was used to doing like JS doc style comments. Let's just go to SCR init ship. And let's just start working down the list here. So I was used to doing it like this to where like this is how I would normally do JS doc stuff. Um, but and you would it, but I, I guess this is this is cleaner. That's fine. So one, two, three. So I'm just going to paste this here for working reference. So what, uh, I'll show you why this is important uh, once we finish it. So function, so this is going to be SCR init ship. 
and this uh this is uh this is basically what's going to show up for like the 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 autocomplete that shows up at the bottom of the code window so you can see like what step you're on so uh for example like if i do this scr weapon slot down here it just shows like what these arguments are but doesn't really necessarily tell you what they do or anything and i think with js doc style comments this will add a little bit of help um so yeah init ship and ship sprite boom one two three uh description so this is uh initialize a ship uh i'm just gonna say this function uh sets variables of uh, of a ship I cannot type uh, according to the sprite that it should use okay and then for the we'll say param so what we can do is we're just gonna say so I wonder like what parameter types we have uh, what parameter types does JS doc support um, parameter does it show us anywhere? Oh, it's showing me feather data types. So we probably want like GM sprite is what it should be, I guess. So we'll do something like asset asset dot GM sprite this is the type that it should be. And we'll say ship sprite. The sprite index that the ship should use there we go and we'll do this there's no no other parameters it doesn't return anything so this is now done so let's get rid of all this uh let me just double check i didn't miss anything i'm gonna include this warning in this uh description uh, how do we do multi-line descriptions? So we can also do like a shorthand uh, desk as opposed to typing out just uh, description. So I might keep it that way. Um, yeah, I think that should be okay. Cool. So we've got one. So now like if we go to our ship, here we go. And we go to our uh, initialize as oh, a step event. Uh, I guess it doesn't really do anything. Normally, like uh, if you mouse over a, a function or whatever and you wait, it'll pop up like a help comment and it uses that JS doc stuff. So maybe it's not that important. Because if the IDE is not going to do anything with it, then what's the what's the point? Okay, these comments are used to tell the autocomplete feature how the function should be used and filled out in the script editor. Uh, I guess maybe it, since it helps with autocomplete, maybe uh, maybe like if I it'll if I do like the the autocomplete stuff. So if I just do like SPR, no, it doesn't matter. I was thinking maybe like it might only show um, gen ship only sprite assets because that's why i set the argument type as the parameter type but it doesn't really matter so if i'm not going to get anything from doing this then i don't think i'm going to go through the effort of doing these fancy js doc style comments for this i mean maybe i maybe i might do it just just to just to you know look good or whatever or maybe if they add functionality to that later but I'm not excited about it. So uh, anyway, yeah, so I'm going to knock the rest of these out. You guys don't have to sit here and watch me do that. That's going to be pretty boring. Um, I'm just going to do the same thing that I did for the other for the, for the other one. So I'm going to go through and knock this out. And then um, I'm not sure what we're going to do next episode. I mean, we've got a few uh, a few bugs to fix still. Hopefully I'll have something worked out for the shield visuals and then I can sort of tackle the shield visual, but also 
um, you know, do the shield, shield regeneration bug while I'm at it. Um, just knock both of those out. And then I was going to... I'm kind of saving the enemy turret stuff until I figure out how to handle the... Uh, if we go to... Was it here? Yeah, there were some more to-dos that need to be done. So we did... I need to also fig to figure out the sector targeting. So let me cut that. I'm going to move that to my master list here that I have on my controller. So I'm going to say that this will be a feature because I don't currently have a working iteration of it yet. So yeah, but uh, there we go. So this was probably a pretty boring episode, but I like to take the time like after a big win, like getting some AI to work to go through and, and clean up code and make sure that, you know, it's, it's documented and, and good. So that's what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go through my code and all of my scripts. So I'm going to make sure they have those JS doc style comments, um, make sure that everything's cleaned up and looking nice and legible and everything's commented. Uh, I'm not going to change any of the logic unless I find like a, a bug or something, but, um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with what we're able to to accomplish here. Like again, there's probably not much to really be shown, but I think I think it looks a lot better. So, for example, the explosions always appearing where they're supposed to, and then now, um, you know, having uh, having weapons like have momentum with you is a is a is a really big really big benefit. So, come on, let's let's get this guy. Here we go. There we go. Come on, punk. So especially like, cause before, like, you know, I'm, I'm, as I'm drifting, like I'm much more accurate now. Because before it's like, you know, you're, you're drifting up here and you're shooting over here and your bullets were going like this, and it just looked kind of dumb. Speaking of dumb, you can't hit me. <laughs> I just look at that. I just run circles around you. <laughs> no. So yeah, that's fun. Anyway, uh, catch you in the next episode, and we'll see what I do then. But thank you so much for watching, and uh, I really do appreciate it. Um, I also, I need a name for my game. Uh, I put up a, a community post, because I have access to that now. I, I unlocked the community feature, um, because I have enough people watching my videos, I guess, that YouTube decided to turn that on for me. So uh, yeah. Yeah. I just uh, check that out. I'll put like a picture of it somewhere um, and just, you know, check that out uh, and leave. Uh, you, can, you can also leave a comment on this video if you have any ideas. Uh, again, I was thinking about like maybe Cyberjunk 3077 would be kind of funny, but I don't want to get sued. So I need a, a, a pretty good name. So uh, yeah, hit me up with your ideas and I, I really appreciate it. Uh, catch you later.